Today on Shop Nation, we turned this into something a little bit more organized. Welcome back to the workshop, Shop Nation. Today we're gonna to tackle an organizational problem, but not in the shop, but in the backyard. Last year, my wife and I put in a pool, and since then, the pool accessories, the floats, and all that kind of stuff have become a bit of a problem. So I started looking through stores and online for different options of storing all of this stuff, and I just couldn't land on a solution that perfectly fit my needs. So the solution is to make my own. So goals for the project, number one, I want it to look nice and stay nice. This is gonna be outside, so it's gonna have to be built of materials that can sustain being outside all the time. Number two, it's gotta fit all of our pool crap with room for some additional future pool crap. And finally, number three is I'm going to try and make it as bug proof as possible. Now here in Texas in the spring and early summer, there are a ton of wasps. And if you put anything outside, especially something made of wood, it becomes a wasp hotel. So I'm gonna try and build in some extra measures to keep those little suckers out of there. My basic plan started with a concept sketch. Now the main area here is where all of the pool floats and things like that are gonna get stored. This area here is the location for my pool cleaning robot. You know, that little guy that roams around the bottom of the pool sucking up all the dead earthworms. The idea is that it fits nicely in here. This door closes and you never even know it's in there. So the construction of the box is pretty simple. There are basically two frames sitting parallel to each other. The top frame is just a simplified version of the bottom frame. Obviously it doesn't have the four blocks for casters and it doesn't have the center brace here. That's to keep this main compartment easy to get to. So step one is going to be knocking out those frames. Man, am I glad I put in my miter saw stop block system. It came in super handy for a lot of repeat cuts on this project. As a reminder, I do sell these. If you're interested, link above. Before assembly, I'm laying out and pre-drilling for screws. Now, as I mentioned, this is going to be fully weatherproof, including the screws. I really like these outdoor deck screws with the Torx drive. Now these are the blocks on which I will mount my casters. The blocks are actually one inch higher from one side to the other. Now why the heck would I do that? As with most outdoor surfaces, they typically slope away from the house. This is to aid in drainage. I'm trying to film. Can you not see? The slope is actually higher at the house and lower down here. And it's about a one inch difference. And that's enough for me to notice. So I'm actually gonna build that into the design. This is one of those bug proofing measures that I'm taking. I'm laying down the window screen to prevent any critters from making their way up into the box from the bottom. Some staples around the outside keeps it all in place. With the frames complete, I'm gonna attach the back side of the box. Now for this back side, I'm just using treated plywood instead of these cedar slats that we're going to use on the front and sides. This is a heck of a lot cheaper than using cedar and no one's going to see it anyways. Here I'm trying to assemble this on the ground to make it easier. Now it's a bit of a balancing act so be careful when you're putting it. Oh, yeah, okay. That's cool. No one saw that. Carry on. Now being a little bit more careful this time, no problem. Now I'm attaching one corner at a time, making sure that the two frames are square and parallel to each other. The measurement I'm looking for here is 31 and a half inches to the outside of each frame. Now to make this floppy taco a little easier to manage, I'm putting in some temporary braces. This is gonna keep everything in place while I move it around. Now here I'm adding two upright supports that are 24 and a half inches long attached with pocket hole screws. 
Next up, we're gonna add that tongue and groove siding to the sides and front to make this patio box look. So starting on one end and verifying that I have the correct overhang, we attach the first cedar slat with a couple of screws. Then it's just a matter of fitting the rest, keeping them aligned and square with the frame. Cedar is not only great looking, but excellent for outdoor applications, so it should stand up just fine. For all the edges, I fit them up in place. I then mark the board where it needed to be cut, and then trim them to size. All right, so let's tackle the floor of the deck box. For this, I'm using one by two cedar strips that I'm spacing an inch and a quarter apart. This is gonna allow for drainage if I put wet pool toys in here, but should still provide a lot of support for some of those heavier objects. This little spacer block allows me to work off of one side as a reference while maintaining parallel slats as I go across. Now we can address making the top, which is gonna to be made out of the same tongue and groove siding, but it's gonna be long ways instead of perpendicular. Now for the top, I basically had to make a single panel. To do this, I'm using two of my crosscut guides as a 90 degree reference. Now I can butt up the pieces to help me get a nice square-ish panel. To lock those panels in place, I'm attaching some strips of treated plywood at both ends. I'm using outdoor wood glue and brad nails to help secure it in place. So my wife Corinne must have heard me using the nail gun. She got pumped, ran outside, and insisted that she do this end. Yep, okay, I think, yep, that's, that'll, that'll do it. Next, I'm attaching three of these beams across the panels to add some strength. This top is gonna double as a table, so I didn't want it to bow. Finally, I added two more strips to help seal the lid against the box, again, to help keep the bugs out. With the top flipped over, I'm marking out the locations of the hinges. Now to keep everything flush, I'm gonna route out a pocket for this hinge to sit. I did notch out that last corner with a chisel. The other top section is held in place by pocket screws. Also, go balls. Now it was time to add the trim pieces along the top and bottom of the box. Now for the trim piece that goes around the box lid, I'm actually splitting that piece so that it can separate to open. The bottom half is lined up and a makeshift spacer creates a consistent gap. Finally, the front door is added with a couple of European style hinges. Now to keep the door flush against the frame, I'm using three rare earth magnets on both the frame and the door. These are simply super glued in place. Again, bug control. And then finally my favorite, no it's not, finishing the whole thing with some stain.
This stain isn't even satisfying to put on. Ugh, the worst. All right, it's the next day. Our dog PETA doesn't look overly amused. Time to put this beast in place. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. Now overall I think the deck box turned out great, but there are a couple things that I need to add and change. First of which is a handle for the top door. I also need to add two gas struts to that door to make it easier to open and close. And finally I need to restain it darker because per my wife, it looks like redneck furniture. In the grand scheme of things, that is one of the easiest things to change, so that's okay. Guys, we're recording. We are live right now. Doing it live! So if you like the channel, if you like the content, please hit subscribe, like. I'm gonna be putting out more videos. I know I keep saying that and I just took a break, but I am actually going to be putting out more videos. So with that, I'm gonna head over to the deck box, grab a float, and enjoy the pool. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, keep pursuing shop greatness. See ya.